Hello, everyone, and welcome to our poster presentations. My name is Terry Robinson, and I will be your moderator for the next 45 minutes. A quick reminder before we begin, uh, during the presentation portion, please keep your audio and video muted unless you are presenting or you are asked to participate by the moderator. You may use the chat tab to ask questions, which will be addressed during the Q&A portion. Thank you all for joining us, and I'll turn it over to our first presenters, Jennifer Beamer and Ken Kotich of Claremont College's Library, and their poster entitled The Conundrum of Senior Thesis in the Library's Open Access Institutional Repository. Great. Thank you, Terry. I'm Jen Beamer, and this is my colleague, Ken. You're getting us like two for one in one window. <laughs> um, we were just going to sit in opposite rooms, and we figured we'd, we'd come in together. Um, so thank you so much for having us and um, for letting us share with you today, sort of, I think, kind of a show and tell uh, about our thesis, senior thesis, or in some cases called a senior capstone um, at the Claremont Colleges, uh, where we work together as a team uh, in the inter, um, interdisciplinary, I was going to say, in the institutional repository. Um, we uh, work together on uh, a number of um, projects. Of course, we do ETDs for our graduate institutions, but senior thesis takes up a large portion of our work uh, time. Um, and we have seven colleges at the Claremont Colleges um, and five undergraduate colleges, which uh, see the value in our repository, but um, don't often uh, follow our workflows or follow procedures that we've set up uh, for them. And so we want to share a little bit with you. Um, we're hoping in the Q&A that maybe uh, you'll give us some feedback or you'll reach out to us later uh, if you're having the same situation as us. Um, and um, we will just jump right in. I'll do a few um, portions of the poster and then I'll hand it over to my colleague Ken. So uh, essentially we have a fairly robust um, senior thesis program. It's existed for about 10 years. Um, we have about, um, oh, well, not very many, I guess in, in the scheme of thing, but we have about 500 deposits per academic year. Um, two or a portion of those come from two institutions that mandate students cannot graduate without depositing their uh, senior thesis in our repository. And then three institutions of those five undergraduates have this optional deposit, and it's really up to the student. However, they must have someone's approval, an adult, an adult approval, we call it, but it's really um, it's really they're either the reader of their senior thesis or sometimes it's the registrar, uh, sometimes it's a department head, etc. Um, and so students self-deposit their theses, um, and um, then uh, we have this kind of workflow of approval um, and, and um, based on what's the ways that they deposit. Um, so they have three choices. One is open access. Um, uh, of course, we this is the information we communicate directly to them, so they'll hopefully understand what's going to happen. Um, so fully open access where the metadata um, and the full text PDF are available. Most people um, find via Google Scholar our repository um, or campus only access, which means they would have to be a current uh, faculty, student or staff to access the work. Uh, they would be able to see that there is a PDF but they cannot download it. Um, and then finally, embargoed. Um, and this, of course, just is the bibliographic citation or metadata. Um, and then they reach a, if you use digital commons, you know they reach this button that says you uh, can't download this until a certain time and date that has been set by them or by us uh, in the workflow. Um, we do have a lot of requests for people to dark archive their theses, but we don't do this. Um, and also we have a number of exemptions. Uh, a number of our schools have sort of high ranking, I guess that's what you call them, students who are going to publish, undergrad students who are going to publish with faculty. And so they don't want anyone to see their work um, until it's, it's published or in a format that they wish um, to see. So I'm going to hand it over to Ken and he's going to talk a little bit about the numbers. Yes, thanks, Jen. Thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, when I started uh, working with Jen, uh, part of my one of the earliest projects I did was to assess um, how often we receive requests for closed 
theses, these these items that are campus only restricted from the outside world um, to access items in the institutional repository. And we found, of course, um, a big discrepancy between the mandatory, uh, the mandated, you know, uh, schools that have to deposit versus these optional depo uh, deposits where students um, upload and post their senior thesis themselves. Um, with with CMC um, and Scripps being the two mandated um, schools. So there's, of course, a higher amount of deposits per academic year from these institutions. And we're seeing um, almost about half actually um, be released closed, meaning the students won't be able to access them later when they can't access their email and all that. And um, and then, of course, people from the outside world who see it pop up in Google Scholar can't can access the paper as well. Um, so, you know, between 6,218 deposits, we're seeing 3,091 being about restrict, restricted or closed. And these are these are from stats I grabbed back in January. So that's a forty nine point seven one percent closed in just in just from the uh, the the senior theses ETDs of the IR. Um, oh, sorry, Jen, can you that's okay. can scroll down? Thank you. Yeah. So um, and these uh they of course account for a high amount of downloads and interaction um um from people coming to scholarship at Claremont our IR. Um, and we've noticed that um, the the largest amount is from the CMC school, right? Because they have a higher deposit per um, per academic year. But um, you know, uh, and, and Scripps, of course, as well. The other schools, but um, we are seeing an increase in actual um, interaction with the deposits that are coming from the optional schools. These being Pitzer, Pomona, and um, uh, HMC. HMC has been a steadily um, a steady depositor because we deposit their math thesis. There are they aren't interacted with as much though, so that's why we see a little bit of a lower um, download amount. But the the Pitzer and Pomona students that are starting to upload a lot, um, these tend to be more like um, environmental analysis departments or you know some humanities departments that see a little bit more interaction. And um, but even these areas with the increased amount of of submissions we're starting to get the last couple of years, these are also being closed. And we're trying to, of course, uh, encourage open access in the in the IR. So you can see there the total amounts. Um, I didn't include like the total of the of senior thesis in the in scholarship at Claremont because it's steadily growing. So uh <laughs> And, um, but yeah, so that's just a little pie chart there. So should we go to the next one? Okay. Yeah. Next part. Yeah. Do you want me to do this one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, so uh, I guess um, our conundrum lies in, it's a lot of labor uh, to create uh, these workflows, to follow through, to follow through with individual students. Um, and there's just uh, 1.6 of us. So Ken uh, is also a digital production assistant and helps with um, a, a digital library that we have and myself. Um, we provide to each and every student, uh, of course, in group in group situations, we try to get as many as wants to get at once together. Um, we provide instruction on the whole workflow, um, what it means to put your work in uh, an open access venue or closed venue. Um, we provide handouts. Um, we have um, the videos. Uh, we have subject a team of subject librarians that uh, get in touch. Uh, usually with the students who are writing their senior thesis from the very start and help them with resources. Um, and then we also support them through the posting process. So you can imagine um, our favorite week is the, the last week before graduation when all the students are calling us to say they can't figure out how to log in and they think they uploaded, but they're not sure. Could we check? Um, and so the two of us cover um, cover sort of all the back end workflow. Um, we also have a digital commons platform, but I would say uh, we are um, sort of like, um, is the word frustrated or I don't know, we try to do all the things ourselves. We I come from a D space environment, and so we want to do the stuff ourselves. 
Um, and so we do that the best we can. We reach out to, D uh, to Digital Commons when we need to. Um, but originally the intent of this platform um, and also uh, it, a very high value um, sort of um, a situation is our dean loves the senior thesis um, and we want them to be open, uh, but um, not necessarily closed to everybody else. Hey, so Jennifer, can... sorry to interrupt, just five minute One... warning. Oh, sure. Thank you. Um, so we um, we do have lots of challenges, I think, as we've alluded to, and I'm not going to read them all off to you. But you can imagine in these workflows with different having mandated students talk to each other um, and some really want to um, post their work. Faculty don't want them to post their work in the non mandated. Um, you know, we also have students because they self deposit, um, they have a lot of missing metadata. And so we go back in and try to fill that or we reach out to them. Um, we also noticed that there's a steadily um, growing word of mouth about the library will archive your thesis for you. Um, and so our Pomona and Pitzer colleges are just inundating us with, um, with yes, papers. Sir. Um, so we're yeah. working to fix all of this, <laughs> these problems, um, but we would love to hear a number of years ago, I think I sent out to this community, uh, does anyone deposit senior theses? Uh, we would love to be able to document and share our work a bit more with everybody and get all the input from the community because it's a, it's a mountain to climb some days. Yeah. So I think that's it. Any other yeah. comments? We're, oh, yeah. Yeah. I was just about to add the whole the whole part about the the weekly requests and that 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 creates a big problem yeah. because people think they can get it but they can't so. right we could have a whole other person just answering requests for theses that people want to read and they're closed um and so that i think personally that's a disappointment to us because we're you can probably tell we're passionate about open access um <laughs> but um we uh have to do what we have to respect what the student authors want uh and certainly their faculty members too or we won't exist anymore so uh, we we work each day on trying to change minds, and um, I think that's it. So thanks, Terry, and thanks everybody okay. for listening. Thank you, Jennifer and Kent. We do have one question in the chat. Um, someone asked, "What do you use for self deposit of the theses?" So we um, I, we just point students to the Digital Commons platform, and they can sign in, create an account. And then they can upload their work and label all of their own metadata, et cetera. We have a lot of drop down menus, so we point them to the right metadata um, to fill in. But uh, yeah, the Digital Commons platform is set up to be quite easy for self deposit. Uh, just got one more question. Um, can you explain about 40% missing full text? Uh, yeah, so I think that I think Ken's referring to here the so that we have this, um, you know, the newer ones that are coming in, they don't want to deposit their actual thesis. So they're miss we're missing the full text option. Um, and so they uh, think that by not putting the document <laughs> in or adding the document um, that then nobody will read it. Again, I think this slides around a lot of um, nerves that students have, right? Like, because they know the internet, what you can find and what you can't, and they're a little nervous for people to read items. So that's that's a problem for us. And if we were to switch platforms too, I think that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, yes. Yeah. And uh, also uh, aspiring to have a different platform creates a conundrum for us because we're missing a lot of uh, information Perfect. from the self deposits. Um, so we would have to go back in and, and you know, grab that. We we do like to have standards and things, but um, yeah. it makes it it's very loose <laughs> <laughs> with students sometimes. Um, let's see. Does Digital Commons allow full embargoes of thesis files? They do. Yes, they do. And um, uh, sometimes we go back and double check when people want them to release because we notice that uh, sometimes Digital Commons doesn't release them automatically. Um, so we do go back and check. But yes, they allow full embargo. However, students often get a little upset when they realize the metadata is there even though it's embargoed. People who don't, uh, faculty do too, because they don't click through to see that, you know, they just are Google scholaring around and they don't see that actually you can't access the text, but you're getting a full abstract and the full author name, et cetera. 
Thanks, Jennifer and Ken. Um, Thank um, you. There's several comments out in the in the chat if you want to check them out for people who uh, can kind of commiserate with you and and want to help with what you're doing. 